You can mention it my name, but don't like what you say. I don't give a fuck. Y'all can suck my dick. So starting in SQL 2008, a lot of those database level operations that cause the entire plan cache to be flushed no longer do so, which I think is, is great. But they will still cause the entire database's plan cache to be flushed. So it's really important to realize that they'll still cause you some added CPU and compilation costs. So you might not want to perform some of these operations, you know, at 10 o'clock on a Monday morning with a, a huge amount of activity in a very very volatile database. So the database level operations that cause the database plan cache to be flush include things like dbcc flush proc and db. You pass in the database ID to use this. When you detach, drop, or restore a database, those all make sense. And, and if you detach a database, then the plan cache would have to be evicted. So that, you know, you drop a database, same thing. That, those don't, you know, bother me so much. But I think it's very interesting that if you change a database from read-only or read-write, or you change a file group within the database to read only or read write, then the entire database's plan cache is, is cleared. And that's, that's kind of interesting. I mean, it's just something to be aware of. If you ever take a database offline or you auto close a database, then that database's plan cache is flushed. And there are others. And what's really frustrating is I've never found a single place, whether it be the books online or even the plan cache white papers, where they give me a, a definitive list of all of the things that cause the plan cache to be flushed. And I even just recently found that changing your recovery models will cause your plan cache to be flushed. And I haven't seen that documented anywhere. So one of the notes, and this is just kind of one of the cautionary notes that I have for this section in general, is that there are many places where some of these are documented but not all of them. And there are some cases where they say, even in 2008 or 2012, that some of these operations cause your entire server's cache to be cleared. And that's not correct. So some of them aren't documented at all, like changing a recovery model. And like I said, some say that the entire server's plan cache is cleared, and that's not the case either. So I'm gonna give you some ways to be able to test and see what is cleared after an operation. So when I do the demos, you'll be able to take that back to your server. If you're ever going to do something at the server level or the database level, you can do a test run of it in a development environment, and then using the code that I'm showing you, determine what got cleared, and then you'll know what the effect is going to be for sure in production. So I, I wish there were a nice single central definitive list, but now it's just something that I will you know, do and check before I go and do something in production.